Hi. This is section three in solid state devices. We'll be talking about crystals in this section. Um, we'll start out with some definitions. We'll talk about Bravi lattices. We'll talk about uh, some density definitions and then surfaces. Of course, this is all motivated by, by real devices, where here you have an image, again, of a two-dimensional MOSFET. And uh, we'll, we'll discuss uh, crystals in the sense of, uh, first, some definitions of one-dimensional materials, and then work up to uh, descriptions of primitive cells and what is a Bravi lattice. And let me get started on this. So. So crystals are the core of uh, these devices that we're talking about. Uh, we'll uh, study these devices in one-dimensional, uh, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional crystals. And then we can uh, expand those principles uh, um, into novel materials as needed. So let me start out from a one-dimensional crystal. This is really, in a way, a string of uh, atoms, if you will, of unit cells. We'll talk about a primitive unit cell. And of course, in, in nature, nothing, no realistic system is truly 1D. But uh, there are examples of 1D systems that really uh, can be approximated uh, really well uh, by that. Uh, in our realm here, we have 1D heterostructures like lasers and resonant tunneling diodes that, that uh, can be modeled really well as one-dimensional crystals. We'll also talk about 1D models of transport early on, of tra uh, tunneling, etc. We'll use 1D models to really string atoms together in periodic systems quite a bit in the early part of this course. And it's, uh, it's a very powerful tool. Now, if you go into 2D systems, of course, um, uh, then things become a bit more interesting and challenging. Um, we uh, will uh, utilize the, the concept of a unit cell here as well. And we'll start with 2D and then expand into 3D. And the reason why we concentrate on a unit cell uh, or the concept is that in, in reality, a crystal considers of, of a very large number of atoms. A, a, a mole is um, 10 to 23 atoms. Um, as a, as a uh, atomic weight uh, in, in mole. And that's a number of atoms that we can't even uh, comprehend uh, as a human and we'll, can never solve it even with the biggest supercomputer that we might have available. So we need to have a, a way to abstract uh, this almost infinite cell into a small repeated cell. So these small repeated cells might look like this, where you uh, span two basis vectors here in 2D. And uh, with those two vectors uh, and their definition, you can reach every single atom in this 2D lattice here. Now, you could use a different unit cell. You can use one that's uh, angled like this, and you can achieve the same thing. You can reach every atom with these two basis vectors in the, in the unit cell. So the point is these uh, unit cells are not unique. They could be also as simple as that, as being in the center, having the atom in the center like that. They also could have more atoms in it. So here's an example of a unit cell that has more atoms in it here in blue. So uh, the, uh, the other ones, uh, the red and the yellow here, are uh, primitive in that they have a single atom per unit cell. Uh, the blue one here has more atoms, and that's a non-primitive cell. But again, you can have a non-primitive cell and uh, define it that way and reach every atom in the crystal like that. Now, the way to define a cell is that the one cell defines the property of the whole solid. So you can get to every atom in the, in the system through that. And you can address that with integer uh, numbers uh, that reference these basis vectors A and B. All right, so through simple translation with integer uh, numbers, you can address every single atom in the crystal. That's the definition of a unit cell. And um, we'll go one more further, that uh, in a Bravi lattice, what we want to achieve is that every point has the same environment as every other point. 
So if you consider, for example, a, a structure like this, it looks very regular on the top right, where you have these yellow and uh, green atoms, and it's a very regular structure, but this is not a Bravi lattice. What you can do is you convert this into a Bravi lattice like this, where the, the lattice point has a basis. And um, the basis then is repeated in this lattice. And um, within that lattice, every connection has the, the same chemical um, relationship, the same geometry, etc. So that is how we define a, a Bravi lattice with a basis. All right. Here's a pretty famous example of such a Bravais lattice with a basis. It's graphene. And if you look carefully, here you have atoms A and B. Of course, these atoms are all carbon. But uh, A and B have different chemical environments. Uh, a is bonding uh, on this uh, pictogram to the left in angles, top left and bottom left. And uh, atom B is uh, ang uh, having bonds to the top right and the uh, uh, top uh, bottom uh, right and connected to A. So A and B see different chemical environments, different geometries. So that by itself is not a Bravi lattice. But you can combine A and B into a single uh, basis and then convert that basis into a rhombic Bravi lattice. And then on that lattice, uh, every element, every basis in that lattice sees the same chemical environment. So how you get to a, uh, a, a, a Bravi lattice, you combine complex components into a single repeated cell and establish basis vectors for that repeated cell. And again, with those basis vectors, you can reach every atom in the structure. All right. There's other examples of, of cool examples in, in art. So here's a Kepler tiling. And um, you can draw in a cell like this. And that would be the basis that is now repeated. If you look, for example, at an Escher tiling, you can see um, repeated cells as well that are rather complex on the inside, but they are nevertheless repeated. Of course, the art here is finite. Um, there's other um, cells that are non-periodic. They have two different unit cells in them, but these unit cells are in random order. So here's an example of a Penrose tile where you have the blue and the green elements in it, and they are unique and well described, but they don't have a long range order. They have a random order. So that is not a Bravi lattice, and it can't be represented by a Bravi lattice because you can't find a single unit cell that with a single uh, basis vector, you can address every element into the, in that large crystal with just an integer number. Another fancy example from art here is our ancient tiles that, that use repeated uh, cells, but they are uh, random in order, and they can't be represented as a Bravi lattice either. So there's actually technical examples as well of such random uh, compounds uh, that are rather relevant. I also mentioned that silicon germanium by itself is a random alloy that has no long-range order in a previous uh, presentation. So the point is a Bravi lattice must contain long-range order. All right. So the, as I mentioned, we have the issue that we want to define unit cells. And we can, even in the simple 2D example, we can draw a, a a bunch of different unit cells, and obviously your creativity has no limits um, to define different unit cells that could be getting complex and rather large. The point is, can you find a way to, to have a recipe to define a single unique primitive cell? And there is a, a recipe like that. It's called the Vigno Sites cell. So we look at this lattice here on the top right and focus on these 
uh, atom points or grid po points and establish a single primitive cell. The way you do that is you, you choose a reference atom, like the one here in red, and you draw lines to its nearest neighbors. Then you bisect any of these lines with another uh, orthonormal line. So you draw, through each bonding direction, you draw a line like this, bisection. And as you do that, you enclose a surface in 2D, and in 3D you enclose a volume. And you, that inner surface, or the inner volume, is the primitive cell that you constructed through this recipe. So the smallest area of volume enclosed is the so-called Wigner-Zeitz primitive cell. And there's uh, other ways to construct uh, a uh, primitive cell. The Wigner-Zeitz way is a commonly accepted one, and it's, it's very easy to follow. Um, and this, this recipe always works. All right. So we covered basic definitions of crystals, unit cells, um, uh, repeated cells and the construction of the uh, Wigner-Zeitz uh, primitive cell. Uh, we'll talk next about uh, how we can tabulate different crystal uh, tables. So, thank you.